If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels thanking me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Uh, I'm going to ask if he would, I tell you what, I am going to open us up in a word of prayer this morning. Will that work? All right, let's do that. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just ask that you fill this room with your presence. Fill our hearts and our minds with your presence, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this group of believers that are here. We give you praise and glory. Lord, we just ask that you be with Tim today as he brings the message. And Lord, we just ask that you allow us to minister to Steve and Jonna today as well. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory 
In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, today let's see birthdays and anniversaries. Here we go. There it is. All right. Uh, coming up this week on September 26th, Winston pa uh, Patterson. Also on the 26th, Rod Waldrup. Yes. On the 28th, Tex Prather. And if you have Tex Prather's cell phone number, he would sure appreciate a call on the 28th. Uh, on the 29th, Melissa Bowles. And on October 1st, Del Waldrup. Did y'all work that out? That's awful close in one week. Yeah. And then also on the first, Neil Holdeman. All right. And no anniversary. So any birthdays or anniversaries that we may have missed that we didn't have up there? Any? All right. Let's sing happy birthday and anniversary. Oh, we have one. Wait a minute. She doesn't want to say. Caitlin. This week, wait, when's her birthday? The 30th. September 30th. All right. We'll get her up there next time. Okay, happy birthday and anniversaries. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. All right. Okay, we do not take up an organized offering. We have a leather can back here in a church house and then a leather can back here at this entrance. <laughs> However, the Lord leads your heart in that matter. Those are there for your convenience in your worship. All right. Immediately after the service today, we have a brisket lunch. And so that will be for help us uh, raise funds for Steve and John Bounds and uh, help them with their medical expenses. So if you cannot stay, but you would like some of LB's brisket and you can't find a brisket anywhere better, anywhere in this area, and, uh, but if you would like just a to-go box, there is a list, a sign-up list out here. If you would do that uh, while uh, we're doing our praise and worship songs, just run up there and put your a name on the list, and they'll have a box lunch ready for you after the service. And there's also the bucket there. So the lunch is for your donations. So whatever you feel like donating to uh, Steve and Jonna, then that uh, bucket is there for them. And then um, <clears throat> as we eat, we will also have a dessert auction. So uh, bring your sweet tooth and just tie it to your wallet, and that'll work out just great. <laughs> All right, let's see. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> a moment of chastisement. We have news letters out for October. And <clears throat> There are about 20 of these left for September. And Brother Larry and I have asked, what do you do with these after you read them? Pass, Pass them on. So we've got about 20 of these from September that could be passed on. Yes. So, but the new ones are out. And I want to take just a quick moment to do one thing for you. Uh, on, uh, in the book of poetry that... Uh, Judy Wade had published the way we see it for people here in our church who had poetry. I wanted to read you something from Terry Ann Howington. I believe I pronounced that correctly. But I just thought it was fitting for what we did last week with uh, dedicating The Rock with Brother uh, Larry and Terry. But here's how this goes. There is an old hilltop just off the highway Mostly mesquite, cactus, and rock. Nothing special, nothing to make you stop. What good was this piece of land? Even cows rambled on, not stopping to graze. Never doubt that God has a plan. All he needed was the right kind of man. It would take a special one, and only a cowboy would do. For this old hilltop, mostly mesquite, cactus, and rock, you see, a cowboy looks at cactus in bloom and sees a cactus rose, a green mesquite as shade for a tired working horse, and rocks 
as solid foundation when the weather turns bad. Beauty and usefulness where others see only uselessness. Cars and trucks zoomed on by until a black silhouette caught their eye. It was nothing special, just a piece of iron. Not even the shape was unusual, at least not in Texas, that sits on this old hilltop, mostly mesquite, cactus, and rock. A horse with head bowed, a cowboy hat in hand, on bended knee before a wooden cross that seems to reach to the sky, standing tall on this hilltop, mostly mesquite, cactus, and rock. Further back, you might notice a metal building like most around these parts. The drive was a wooden, up the drive was a wooden sign that simply says, Cowboy Church. Sundays, it's packed with trucks, trailers, and cars on this old hilltop, mostly mesquite, cactus, and rock. Horses tied outside, cow dogs lazing on truck beds. Voices raised in praise carry on the wind up to the sky. Some dressed in Sunday best, some just off the tractor. From plowing in the field, taking time to join together in prayer and praise to their creator. On other days, strangers are drawn off the highway who need a place to rest and find peace. There is an old hilltop just off the highway, nothing special. What is special is what God does on this old hilltop, mostly in mesquite, cactus, and rock. So you're welcome to take a newsletter and share that with others after you have read it. Okay, on October 9th, about two weeks, yes, two weeks, there will be a baby shower for Lauren Bowles. And if you would like to participate in helping that, uh, Terry is not here today, but Tammy is here. And if you could visit with Tammy back in the children's church after the service, she would greatly appreciate that. And uh, just let her know that you're there to help with that uh, baby shower on October the 9th, and it'll be immediately following the service that day. And everybody in the congregation is welcome. They will have food. That always brings cowboys. So uh, that will be available there. All right, on October 12th, Eddie Hill will be inducted into the Legends of North Texas. <laughs> and uh, that will be with a special lunch and celebration October 12th. I believe it starts at 11.30. Uh, but something like that, and so invite you to attend that if you would like to do so. And then uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month of October, and so on October the 2nd, we will have the men's prayer breakfast that starts at 8 a.m., and welcome all the men to that. And then the ladies' Bible study starts at 9 a.m. I got it right. So, so 9 a.m. And then... Uh, we have our special music today. Melanie Key uh, will be bringing our special music. And Tim Ross is here today. And so we're excited to hear the message from Tim and, uh, and then his uh, support system. Tracy is here with him. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Yes, and I've got that right here. That's on, on there. There it is. See, I've got it. So October 1st, I was trying to break it up a little bit, but October 1st is the uh, benefit that they're putting on for Jonna and Steve at the Elks Lodge in Wichita Falls. The doors will open at 5, the dinner will be at 6, and entertainment there to follow. So there'll be live music and, uh, and an auction. There'll be a live auction and a silent auction both, right? So that will be, uh, and I know there's some good things. I've already seen some of the things that are at that auction. So there's some good things to, to bid on uh, to help Jonna and Steve out at that time. Okay. Uh, after Tim's preaching and teaching today, 
Brother Larry announced last week that we will uh, bring those forward that like to come up. We'll invite you if you would like to formally join the church. We'll do that at that time as soon as he finishes that. And then we'll close our service in prayer after we uh, introduce those and ask you to come up that would like to formally join the church. All right. Ah. No. No. Next Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to have to get a new external memory or reboot this one. That's twice she's done that to me. <laughs> we'll just reboot that one. I know it works. All right. Okay. Anything else I might have missed? We're good. All right. Let's do this and let's worship our Lord and Savior. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love, and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our pains cry, and he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it, and you know a little fire is burning, he will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seems dreary without a ray of cheer, and then if I'm out the doubt, I may light a light of the mist of sin may ride and hide the starry sky, but just a little talk with Jesus clear the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our pain and cry. And he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn it. And you know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will Hear our pains cry, we'll answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. He keeps me singing. Yes, he does. There's within a heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not, I am with thee Peace, peace still In all life that's hell and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. Discord filled my heart with pain. Jesus slept across the broken streets, stirred the thumbering cords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. singing as I go.
Soon he's coming back to welcome me Far beyond the starry sky I shall wing my flights to worlds unknown I shall reign with him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Good morning. Build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell. No ugly kingdom, but my cabin will do till I get home. My mansion yonder on the hills of glory. I hope my mansion sits near God's throne. Just build my mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home. It doesn't matter who lives around me, just so sits near the throne my mother's mansion may be close by me across the golden avenue she was the first one to teach me of heaven and the very first Lord to tell me about you. So build mansion next door to Jesus and tell the angels I'm coming home. Doesn't matter who lives around me, just so my mansion sits near the throne. 
just so my mansion sits near God's throne. Please stand for praise and worship.
Father God, we come before you this morning to thank you, Father, for the privilege of being in your house today. Father, we lift him up to you right now. We ask you, Father, to use him as the vessel that you have prepared him to be to bring the message to each heart in this place today. Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill this place with your love. And Father, we ask you to fill this United States of America with your love and to show your children the power that they have to stand up for you against the evil that is trying to destroy this nation and your children, Father. We love you. We thank you, Father, for loving us unconditionally. And it is in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. All right, children may be dismissed for Children's Church and Intermediate Class. You are also dismissed. And uh, we're going to welcome Tim again and uh, look forward to your message today, Tim. And uh, we do have a rope can up here at the front if you would like to help with Tim and Tracy's ministry as they uh, continue to share the message of Jesus with others. All right. Good morning. Well, it's kind of a last minute thing that I got to come again. Um, I want you to keep your pastor and your prayers and his family. Amen. Um, I, I, I want to, you know, I've, all, I've, I've said before, I'm just, I'm thankful to the people that serve. Um, you know, Mr. Brent. You know, he keeps things rolling around me. He's always in there. Do you need anything from me? And, you know, he keeps this place running. Amen. And I'm thankful. Give him a hand. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thankful. I am thankful because uh, there's not one man that can do all this. It takes a lot of people and a lot of prayer. A lot of things go on behind the scenes that y'all don't have anything. Y'all don't have any idea. And so... Uh, I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. I, I, um, I, I just wanted to say something. When I was younger and uh, I was kind of in between, you know, I grew up in a family of ministers, so, but, you know, I kind of picked my own route for a while. And when I was in between, when I did go to church, because my parents, you know, had church, so when I was at church, I used to think, oh, God, I hope... I hope you don't tell that preacher, you know, all this and that and the other. And, and I don't know if you've had it, ever had it done to you before, but there are people, and God will use people sometimes to kind of read your mail. You know what I mean? But I was always a little bit scared of that because I was like, well, if he reads my mail, I've got some bad letters in there. <laughs> I mean, there's some stuff in there I don't really. Amen. God's not like that. Amen. God will not ever embarrass you. In fact, his word says that his love covers a multitude of sin. We're, we're, to, help, we're, to, we're to cover. And so maybe where I'm going with this word, I didn't really know where I was going to go. And number one, I want you to quit being afraid that somebody that you see in a place spiritually that may be here is going to read your mail in front of everybody because it's not supposed to happen. And if it does happen, he's wrong. Amen. I would never do that. Because I would never want that done to me, amen? amen? I got plenty of bad letters still in the mailbox that I'm working on, all right? So that's not the way God operates. So sometimes we pass up on a blessing from somebody that wants to maybe speak into our lives and encourage us or give us wisdom or knowledge or uh, a certain way that we maybe can get out of a search, certain circumstance or situation but we kind of back off away from that because we don't want them to read our mail. So I want to I just give you a little bit of confidence that that doesn't happen. Not to men to listen to the Lord. Okay? So I used to ask the Lord all the time, Lord, I need a word. <laughs> I need a word from you. I need, I need direction. I need these things. But I don't want to be afraid. Well, yeah, but if he does that, then maybe he's going to go, yeah, but you need to quit blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? No, that's not the way God operates. And when I come in here, usually the Lord speaks to me about praying over certain things. And this morning, I want to say, quit letting the little things aggravate you 
and, and just ignoring them. Because that's not the way God operates. I kind of talked a little bit about that last time I was here, right? And so there are people that are got some knee problems, and you've been just putting up with it. And you need to quit putting up with it. Because the word tells us if we lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. That's what it says. So quit putting up with the little ailments that you're dealing with and start believing God for total victory in those areas. Amen. Amen. That your knees healed. And, and I want to live a long, good, prosperous life until I'm tired of living. Me and my wife got in a discussion the other day. And she was saying, what, was 105? 105. I go, heck no, I'm checking out 90-something. I'm out of here. She's like, no, I'm leaving to 105. And my daughter was with us. <laughs> And uh, she started saying some things that was really funny. <laughs> About, you know, well, I ain't wiping your butt, so you better, <laughs> you better be good, strong, and healthy if you're going to live that long. <laughs> I don't know why the Lord has me go in these directions, but anyway. <laughs> but she wants to live a long and healthy life until she gets to a place that she wants to go home and be with the Father. Amen? Amen. And I, I just want to do it a little quicker than her. I don't figure I can do a whole lot at 105, so let's just check out. But anyways, that's, that's God's will for us. It's not to live with all this junk, but be believing God for health and healing and wholeness until the day we decide to go be with Him. Amen? That's the way He designed it originally. And the men in the Old Testament that lived two, three, four, five hundred years, it took them a long time to learn how to die. <laughs> it did. You know, God didn't create Adam and Eve to ever die. Right. Sin killed them. And it took them a long time to learn how to die. And the longer we go on on this earth, the, the faster it gets. People die earlier and earlier and earlier. Amen. So quit putting up with those things. You be believing God that you're going to be healthy and whole. Right. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm on a journey to get healthier. I've ate cheeseburgers and double meat cheeseburgers. In fact, Clay Cooper called me double. Because every time we stopped, I got a double meat cheeseburger and a payday and a Dr. Pepper and maybe two Dr. Peppers. So he just always called me double. And I begin to look like it, if you know what I mean. I, I begin to kind of become double of what I usually am. But, you know, I'm doing that because I want to live long and healthy. So I, I'm not double anymore. I don't remember the last time I got the double cheeseburger. But I'm starting to eat healthier and do things that will help me live healthy. Amen? And that's, I mean, hey, you can lay hands on yourself and I can lay hands on you too. But if you're eating double meat cheeseburgers three times a day, don't be asking God to help you lose weight. Amen? We got to do our part too. Amen? So... If you've been having knee troubles, you quit putting up with it and start believing God. I don't have to pray. You, you can pray. Right. You, you pray. You pray. You pray for those things that have been in your life that's been aggravating and frustrating, and you begin to just deal with it. Oh, that's just part of life. Well, if it's not in here, it ain't part of it. This, this thing right here. Amen? All right, let's go to the message. Last time I was here the other day, and uh, I'll tell you how I came up with this message. Me and Tracy went to a Bible study the other day there at home, and, uh, and we had missed the first one, and we kind of got in on the second one. And, and anyway, they were talking about, you know, how they see things and how we see certain things in our life. And, and that kind of spurred this. The Lord started talking to me about ministering about this. And... Uh, Last time I was here, I talked about pray, pray and hear, amen? And, um, you know, one of the things that, that I'm called to do is to try to change people's thinking about who God is. And the first time I came here, I talked about love. I like that shirt. It says love right there. I talked about who the Father was. I don't know how many of you are here, quite a few of you, but God is love. He doesn't have it. He is it. He's the definition of it. Amen. And, and how I grew up thinking God was mean. How he was just an old judge waiting on me to get in trouble so he could drop the hammer on me. 
And that's the way I saw God when I was younger. And so part of my ministry everywhere I go is to try to teach in a manner that we see God the right way. That we see his word the right way. That's why I just got through saying just a second ago, uh, I want you to see God as all and everything in your life. Not just, well, he's good, but, you know, you need to deal with those little things. No, he wants every part of your life. He wants to be involved in that, and he wants you to walk in the way he wrote his word. Amen? Amen. And healing is a huge part of that. And why do we talk a lot about healing and finances and other things? Because that's what we deal with the most. Amen? Amen. So how we see is very important, and that's what I want to talk to you about. I want you to turn to Matthew, if you got your Bibles or your phone or however you read the word. If you don't bring your Bible or your phone... You need to. What if I'm lying? You won't ever know, right? Matthew chapter 13. Jesus is teaching a big crowd. And uh, after, and he's talking about seed. Some seed fell on good ground, some seed fell on hard ground, some stony ground, some seed fell and the thorns grew up and choked it out. And then after he was done teaching these people, him and his disciples went to a place, and I'm going to start in verse 10, and it says, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables or stories? And he replied, the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he, who, and he will have abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak in parables. Though seeing, they do not see, and though they do not hear or understand. Even though they see, they can't see, and even though they hear, they don't hear and understand. And he was talking to him about if he just jumped into, uh, some preachers would call it the meat of the word, people wouldn't see what he was trying to explain to them. He wouldn't see. So he's explaining this to them about how people see. He's talking about seed, how he's planting the word of God in these people, his word, and how he wanted those people to have a heart that was acceptive and understood. He was trying to show them that they had been taught the old covenant their whole lives, and now Jesus had showed up. And he's beginning to teach them. And in so doing, he explains to his disciples that they can't see it. Oops, sorry. There we go. They can't see. They can't see the truth because they've never been taught the truth. Amen? They couldn't see that this was the guy that the old prophets talked about coming. Many of them couldn't see that this is him. They were blind, in other words. And our world is blind today. They don't see the truth. In fact, she prayed about that just a second ago. They're not seeing the truth. Thank God we see the truth. Amen? Everybody better say amen to that. I'm going to give you a couple examples out of the word, the, the, the children of Israel. The children of Israel is a picture of what we are today. Amen. The children of Israel were locked in bondage and slavery and, in other words, in the kingdom of darkness. And God did all these mighty things to bring them out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But the picture goes like this. And this is the way most Christians walk. They come out of being in slavery into a place that's kind of hard. They go into the desert. Now, God didn't mean for them to stay there. He wanted them to just walk through there and get to what was called the promised land, or in other words, salvation. But so many people get caught in the wilderness, or or I want to call it religion, 
They get caught in this place where they can't just walk over. It, it is just what I said. Let's just put up with that stuff. Let's just, let's just put up with, you know, this and that and the other. It's just part of life. And we don't step over into the promised land. And the children of Israel even got to a place in their own lives where they said, we, we just want to go back into slavery. They could no longer see all the things that God had done to bring them out were the same miracles that he would take them into the promised land and give them a good life, but all they could see was giants. People came to him, oh, you can't go over there. No, no. Oh, uh oh, I don't, I don't know if that's God's will. I, I don't know if you can do that. I don't know if you can start that business, man. Diesel's high. People are, you know, the banks are, the interest rates are going up, and I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if you can go get that good job. I, I, ooh, I don't know. Amen? That's how, that's how we are in our lives. Y'all are all looking at me like I'm crazy, but it's true, ain't it? Uh, oh, no, no, you, you haven't roped in how many years? You, you can't go make the NFR. Uh, oh, you, 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 you can't get over there into the promised land where God's trying to take you because there's giants. Yeah, there's just too, there's too many things out there. Uh, yeah, people aren't spending money now. Don't, don't start nothing like that. No, the same miracles that brought us out. Out of bondage, out of the world, out of sickness, out of disease, out of addiction, out of all the junk that we've all experienced in and even maybe lived in. And he brought us out of that stuff taking us into a place of salvation. And the same miracle that he brought us out of that and gave us Jesus and forgave us of our sins and let us just go be in heaven for eternity in the love of God, that same miracle walks today trying to get us over there to that place of promise. But it's how we see that. It's how we see it. And if we lose sight of, oh, all these things are stopping me and look at the economy and look at inflation and look at this and look at that and then all we see is that we don't remember that those miracles the same God that gave me this word right here that wrote this Bible told me I can well well I'm, I'm letting all these things because this is all I see Amen. the children of Israel were in that place all they could see is that gun we don't have any water you know, Moses is having to hit a rock. The dang birds are bringing us food. The quail are flying in here and we're getting to eat that. But I'm sick of quail. I've been eating quail for a year now. I'm tired of quail. <laughs> he led them by fire by night. Amen. That, that's, uh, that's pretty good, ain't it? <laughs> All these things were happening and yet they were still not seeing those things, only seeing what was going on around them, and they all died right there in the desert. Their kids went over. But it was because the way they could see. Here's, here's another really powerful story that Jesus talks about. He said he went to his hometown, and there could do no mighty works except heal a few ailments. Why? Why? Because it's the way those people saw him. See, they, they said, well, isn't he just the carpenter's son? Isn't he just the carpenter's son? So because of the way they saw Jesus, they, he was able to do nothing there. Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. But yet, those people could not see him in the right light, therefore he was able to do nothing in their life. That's why I talk about the love of God, the peace of God, who God really is. Because if you don't believe that part, then you're going to be just like the, those guys. You don't see Jesus the right way. You can't have what he wants to give you. Right, amen. 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 It's about how you see. It's about how you see the Father. Not about how I see him. No, how do you see him? Amen. It's the way we see he could do nothing there because of the way he saw. Here's a personal little testimony, I guess you might say. Me and Tracy have been uh, 
wanting to build a gym, a fitness center, and uh, so she can start her own practice in there and we can have a full-time 24-hour fitness center there in Life Ann. And we have looked and looked and asked and almost bought different pieces of land and it's really hard to find land there. And some of the land that we've looked at is outrageous where it's like, we can't make that work. There's buildings that sold two years ago for 150000 Now they want 750000 I'm like, I can't make that work. And we've looked, and we tried to buy another little piece of property. We thought it was going to work good, and it was a reasonable price and everything, but then things just started happening. Well, now, it, oh, no, you got to build it this, and you got to do that, and then all of a sudden, things, the door just kind of started closing on that. Well, we own eight acres in the city limits of Life Hand. And our house kind of sits back, probably in the back half of this acreage. And we have probably 300 feet of Highway 4. Our property, our front entrance, comes off of Highway 4, which is the main road that goes through Lipan. Well, not until the door closed on this little piece of land that we, we, we already had the papers at the title company. All we had to do is just write the check. But things began to happen that kind of started making us back away from this deal. And then when it closed, about a couple of weeks go by and, and we call on some different places, another lot, that a uh, little pretty small lot, and they want 80000 for it. And we're like, man, that's pretty expensive for a small lot. And we're, th we're going to be building a 50 by 60 building. So when you add the parking lot, that's a pretty big spot, right? So we're, we're going through this process, and, and then all of a sudden I'm like, hey, we got 300 feet of entrance, and the whole reason we, we thought about building this thing at our house, but it's going to be 24 access gym, and I was like, we don't want people pulling in our place all the time, you know? I don't, I don't want people pulling in my front up there and shining the lights in my house, my dogs are barking, and, but then we got to thinking, man, if we built this just right here and people came off the highway, they wouldn't even shine their lights towards our house and we'll just build a small fence there where we can't see them. And all of a sudden we begin to see the vision of putting it there in that place. But before that, we just couldn't see it. I couldn't see it being there. I couldn't see it happening there. Now we have great peace that, man, we could build this here. We just saved a ton of money on buying land. We own it. And if we ever decide to sell it, it's right here connected to our entire property. So we can either sell it by itself and, and, or, or sell our whole place, and we're just adding value to our place. Amen? Amen. But, but sometimes it took us a little while to start to see it. I want to see where God really wants us to be. And thank God we didn't buy the other place. Because that place wasn't where God wanted us to be. It was just a good option. And the more we continue to pray and seek and do those things, the more God finally opened our eyes to see, well, let's just do it right here. And now it's going to be good. Amen? Amen. It's going to be real good. Here's another one, last one. I'm going to preach fast because I heard there's some great brisket, and I know y'all are already thinking about it. <laughs> so I know if people start tapping their foot, I know I need to close in a hurry, okay? <laughs> it's funny, if you see... Saul, in the, in the word, Saul who became Paul. What happened to Saul on the road to Damascus? He became blind. In other words, he was a religious man. He, he knew this Old Testament, the Torah, front and back. I mean, he knew it. He, he knew everything about it. He was a teacher. He was wise in those areas. Well, when Jesus showed up, he couldn't see Jesus the right way like we were talking about. So what happened to him on the road to Damascus? God blinded him. Why? So that when the, the prophet came and laid his hands on him, he could suddenly see the truth. So he came out of his religious ways. Isn't that interesting? In seeing, he could not see. And that's, that's what I'm talking to you about today. I want you to see how we see God.
That's the number one thing. How I see God, I have to remind myself. When things happen in my life, I have to remind myself that no, God loves me, wants the best for me, yada, yada, yada. God wants healing for me. Here we go. I remind myself of that continuously. Number two, I want to talk to you about how you see your problems, just like the way that Israelites saw their problems dictated the wrong answer for them. And here's a good way to say it is, the problem's not your problem. How you see the problem is your problem. How we see our problems dictates how we respond to them. And yeah, even as a preacher, I don't respond the right way sometimes. Sometimes I want to just throw my sucker in the dirt and go home. Amen? Sometimes I don't respond to problems in my business the right way. Sometimes I want to, I've talked to you all about it, I want to get on the muscle. I want to get fired up a little bit and start worrying about it and getting all, uh, you know, instead of responding to those things as they happen, instead of the, what my mind wants me to tell me is what's going to happen, well, what if they don't show up? Well, what if this happens and that happens? No, I want to respond to my problems the way God taught me to respond to them so that I overcome. We're overcomers. I overcome those things and continue to walk into the presence of what God's called me to do. Amen? Amen. I want to see my problems the correct way so that I can respond the correct way and get the right results. How are you seeing your problems? Here, here's one right here that I just thought of. How are you seeing the problem when you go to stick that thing in your gas tank? Huh? It costs me about 150 to fill up nowadays. I spend 2,000 bucks a month on diesel doing what I do. How do I respond to that? My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Amen. I have to respond in the right way or that becomes a huge problem. Yeah. It becomes a huge problem. Here's, an, here's another good one. I'm a sower. I give. Amen. I give. And because of that, the word promises me certain things. Amen. Amen. And because of that, God's, God's supply is always working in my life. And so... It may cost me 150 bucks, but I know God's going to supply. God's going to continue. God's going to continue to bless my business. God's going to continue to make it to where I can continue to fill that truck up. Amen? Amen. How are you responding to that? Is it in fear? Oh, my God. I can't. I, I can't get gas because I can't pay my electric. I can't. Is it fear or is it by faith? So how are you responding to your problems? Amen? Amen. Here's, here's a big one. How do you see your past? There's a lot of people that don't ever move into the fullness of what God's called them to do because they can't let go of what happened in the past. They can't let go of that stuff in the past. And Paul said, Paul, the same one that got blinded, he said, the one thing I know, one thing I know, forgetting what's behind me and pressing on, Pressing on for the prize, for the high calling of God. He knew that he had to let go of who he was. He used to throw Christians in prison, right? Want to kill them. And then he becomes this born-again guy, and he's leading people to Jesus, but he had to let go of who he was and so that he could fulfill what God had called him to do. you got to let go of the past. And yeah, the devil's going to bring people, oh, you remember when we used to, you know? You remember? Yeah, I do. Thank God I'm not like that anymore. Amen? Amen. You got to let go of that. Well, yeah, my business failed. You know what? If God called you into another one, you're going to have to let go of that. You're going to have to let go of that fear, and you're going to have to walk into this. You're going to have to see what God's calling you to do, and you're going to have to let go of your past. Is that all you look at, your past? Well, you know, that, that guy or girl hurt me, broke up with me, or this or that or the other. Everybody in here has been hurt. <laughs> huh? 
everybody in here has had a boy or a girl break up with them in high school or whatever and hurt, hurt us, you know what I'm saying? But do you just wall up and you're going to live this life alone? I'm ministering to a guy right now that's in the middle of divorce. And he's got the option. He can either get mad and wall himself into this little thing and never trust anybody again and, and never, or he can just move on with life. Yeah, we don't want it to happen, but it is what it is, right? right. We're going to move on. But you can't continue to see your past. Well, I've got divorced right there, so I, I can't get a new one. No, you've got to let go of your past to move into your future. Amen. So are you just seeing your future? Are you just seeing your past? Or here's the next one. How do you see your future? How do you see your future? How do you see being 105? Or whatever your number is. How do you see it? Do you see it crippled up and not able to get around and somebody having to wipe your butt? <laughs> Y'all are getting a little serious. I thought I'd throw that one back in. <laughs> I don't want nobody wiping my butt, all right? How do you see your future? Do you see it broke? Do you don't see any way out of this place that you're in now? Struggling? Financially, struggling in your relationships, struggling in your family, struggling here and struggling there, seeing those problems and all the time? Or are you going to see your future bright like Jeremiah told us? The book of Jeremiah said that God will give us a hope and a future. Amen? We need to see our future the way God's taken us. Amen? The places we're going. No, I'm not going to be broke and disgusted all the time. No, I'm not going to be to that place of sick and blah and all that. No, I'm going to believe what God told me to believe and I'm going to do what God told me to do and I'm, I have my future's bright. I, I'm going to walk into the promised land and I'll get stuck that gum in the desert. We all kind of know what that feels like this year. Huh? We didn't have no rain. A lot of this country looked like desert. No, we're not going to be stuck here. The rain's coming. Rain's coming. It's coming. Coolness is coming next week. Amen. Hallelujah for that. I'm gonna give me a hallelujah. Here, here's, here's this one's a big one to me. How do you see your spouse? All divorce comes from how you see. If the only things I see in my wife is just the little things that I don't like, we're not gonna make it very long. If that's all she sees in me, we're, our marriage is not going to be successful. It can't be successful. How I see my spouse determines our marriage. How she sees me determines our marriage. How we look at our wives, at our kids, how we see them determines our relationship. You know, people look at people differently. You, you, you look at the Queen of England differently than you look at a beggar on the street. Amen? Right. It's natural. We naturally see that way, right? Well, I don't care if my wife drives me crazy and, you know, puts the toilet paper on backwards where it goes behind instead of in front and, you know, squeezes the tube of toothpaste in the middle. And I know them things sound petty, but do you know how many divorces come from little junk like that? That's where they start. That's where they start. What seeing all these little things that I don't like. Well, I don't like how you cook gravy. <laughs> That's a big one. We got to get over that, right? <laughs> she cooks good gravy, by the way. I'm just giving examples. How I see my spouse will determine where our marriage goes. You need to see your wife as the queen, the shim diggity. Amen. Amen. Hey, women, you need to see your man as the knight in shining armor Amen. and respect him and love him. Amen. Even if he's not, even if he's not, if you'll begin to see him that way, if you'll begin to see her that way, your marriage will go to places you never dreamed. Hey, we haven't arrived. We, we haven't arrived. We, we work on it all the time, right? It, it's not a we've arrived kind of thing. None of this life is we've arrived. 
One time I thought when I was rodeoing that I had arrived. It didn't take me very long to understand that I still had a long ways to go. We don't arrive. We continue to work on that thing, right? Amen. You ranchers, quit cussing at your wife when the cows ain't doing the right thing. Don't see her as a bad cowgirl. I know I'm making fun, but that's serious. It is so serious, especially for you young people. You want your marriage to survive? Quit seeing the bad things. Quit seeing all the little things that bug you and start seeing them for who they really are. Continue for your older ones. Start seeing your spouse like you did when you first met. And you were all googie. <laughs> he makes me uh. I know it's funny, but I, I, you want to save your marriage? I'm astounded when I see couples that have been married for 35 years get divorced. It just blows my mind. I'm like, man, you stuck it in there for that long. What the heck? You probably only got another 20 left. So, I mean, you're halfway home. Why? But it's because of that. We begin to see the things that we don't like. We become selfish. and Well, if they would just... And then it winds up in a court somewhere. Amen? Amen. I'm about done, and then I've got a treat for you. In fact, I have a treat for you now. Here's a huge one. And my little wife is going to come up and talk about it. (laughs) And that is how you see yourself. Pink? Pink for girls. How you see yourself. We've got a world full of young people that don't have any idea who they are. And all them devils out there are telling them that they're this and they're transgender and they're that and they're this and they're that. And it's a lie from the pit of hell. And they don't understand. And a lot of us were raised to think that whatever we do is who we are. Well, that's great when you're winning, but it's not very good when you're losing. This is not who I am. It's just what I did for a living. It's not who I am, though. And I want Miss Tracy to talk about that. Praise God. All right, am I on? Can you hear me? Yep. All right. So I I think truly the reason Tim asked me to speak on this part, how you see yourself, because he just shared where we're at in the process of our business and things like that. Rewind months ago because how I would see myself or see our future would never get to where we're at. So I've had the dream. This gentleman has had more faith and more love in me and sees me as more amazing than I think I could ever be. And so he's my biggest cheerleader. He's my biggest fan. And I'm always like, oh, no, I can't do that. I, I'm just a physical therapist. I'm just, I've done this 24 years but I've clocked in eight to five for somebody else. They're responsible for all the billing. They're responsible for getting my patients. I'm just a physical therapist. Yeah, I'm one of the best in the area, but I just saw myself as just somebody's employee. And he has always continued to say, is your dream to keep clocking in and out for somebody or do you ever wanna work for yourself? Well, I had the dream, and it's been up on the shelf for a long time, but I could never see myself because of the thoughts and the way I would speak to myself. I could never see that coming to pass. So I finally decided, you know what? If I really want that, I better find a way to change this. I mean, I know the word, and so I was applying the word, but I don't feel like I was applying it effectively. And so every time... Tim would say to me over the last two years, he's been, when are you going to start a business? When are you going to go out on your own? I would have the same emotion that would rush to me, the same familiar sense of, we can't do that financially. Oh, my gosh. We we might go broke. 
then I would go, I'm not good enough to be my own physical therapist. I don't have a business degree. I can't start a business. I can't run. So that would consume me every time his sentence would come out. And then I'd emotionally just shut down, check out, don't want to talk about it. I'm done. And so when I finally made the decision of I have to do something, what is it? I know the word says take captive the thoughts. Well, I would, he would speak it. I would try to take captive, and I'd be like, Lord, I don't want to have this thought. Lord, I, I don't want to go broke. Lord, I don't want to do this. Lord, Lord, I know you said you got all great things for us. I'm, but I, and I'm like, well, those aren't quite probably the way I should replace my thoughts. So I finally decided that I have to take them cap- captive, but then I've got to eliminate that thought. It has to go because when you study the brain, our emotions are attached to a little filing cabinet in our brain. And when we have that emotion or we have that familiar response or that we see something that's familiar, it goes, and it goes, oh, here's what you're supposed to think. Here's supposed to be what you feel. Well, I had to, when I heard the words from him, when are you going to start your business? That went, here we go, chain reaction. And it would try to grab that file, and this is going to sound so crazy, but it's not. I've been listening to motivational speakers galore. Ed Milet said, you have to eliminate that. So I would, here it would come, I would feel the anxiousness. Well, I would take that little thought, and I would put it on a CD player, and I'd scratch it. And so I'd just have to shut it off somehow. Then I would apply God's word and say, no. God called me to this. I am an amazing physical therapist. I am the best that there is because I will do the natural. God will put a super on it. You know what? We are tithers. We are givers. We are blessed to be a blessing. God will take care of the finances. The harvest will come in. You know what? I don't know things about business, but praise the Lord for Google because Google can teach you a lot. I have friends that are business people. So now that is what my new train of thought came. I started meditating on it. And so I got it in my brain. I started sitting every morning focusing on these new thoughts that the Lord will just continue to pour over me. And then Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, make the vision plain. So I go into my therapy room. I draw a big picture of a fitness center. Ross Physical Therapy and Wellness. I see myself. My eyes are connecting to the vision, the dream. I see it. I see myself helping people. I see me, myself touching lives and changing things. So now I got that connection. I'm seeing it. My brain is connecting and my heart's there and I'm believing it. So you have to change what you're seeing. So I want you to know the tools to change is God's word. But then also the natural, you have got to replace those thoughts immediately and eliminate them. So when you, somebody says, well, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Okay, you already told me what you thought about yourself. You are just a stay-at-home mom? No, I'm a mom that is bringing up these children into this world that are going to lead by example and love God. I'm a mom that's organized. I do these things. So you're not just a stay-at-home mom. You see a job that you're a secretary at, and you're like, oh, I would love to have that position. But you know what? It's a higher up. I'm not really got all the skills for it. No, you don't. Change your thinking. You know what? I am here 8 to 5. I'm here before the time clock starts. I stay late. I go above and beyond. I do more things. I'm a quick learner. I, I can apply for that job. God can put his super on my natural. So change your thoughts, change the emotion, change what's familiar to the better, what God has for you, and see things different through the eyes of the Lord and what he thinks about you. All right. She's like me. She didn't even read her notes. (laughs) I actually stayed on my notes pretty decent today. Romans 12, verse 2, if you go read it, it talks about renewing your mind so that you can fulfill the will of God. 
You want to fulfill the will of God? Then renew your mind. See, Tracy had to learn who she really was to be confident enough to sell herself to people. You got to be confident in business. I have to be able to sell what I do for a living to someone if, I, if they're going to accept me to do their work. Right. They have to see me as a respectful man, an honest man, uh, a fair man. They have to see me in that way or they'll go somewhere else, right? right? If somebody walks up to my door and they don't have the right demeanor, I don't hire them. Mm -hmm. They have to sell themselves a certain way. And that's what renewing their mind is. How do you see yourself? You are a child of the Most High God, created in His image and His likeness. That's who we are to be. And people look at King's kids differently, right? And you're a child of the King. People ought to look at you differently because you're living out what the Word says. Amen? All right. I know they're going to come up and we're going to... Receive people that want to join the church. But i got to ask you, do you know Jesus, first of all? Amen. And I know maybe everybody in here does, but there's Facebookers out there that maybe they don't. Maybe they're going to stumble onto this in some way. So I want to give them the opportunity, amen? amen? And we're all going to get in the boat with them because we were in their shoes too. Amen. All right, so I, I want to pray, and I want us to all pray it. So as I pray, you pray it with me. Amen. Say, Father in heaven, today I come. I believe that you came for me, sent Jesus for me. Today I receive you, Jesus, as the forgiveness of my sin, as my Lord and Savior. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And today, I believe. and today I believe. Now, Father, help me, now, Father, help me. To, renew to renew my mind to live out the will of God that was built for me. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. Thank you so much, Tim and Tracy. So, if you didn't get something out of that message today, you might want to go watch it again. <laughs> All right, we thank you for that. All right, we're going to uh, invite those that if you would like to come and join the church today formally, just come up and do that. And if you would come just stand right up here with me, if you would do that right quick. I think there's a couple of people, yes, that I know want to come and do that. And, um, and you may think some of these people have joined for a long time, <laughs> but... Uh, but they want to formally make that commitment today that uh, this is where the Lord has put them. So, all right. And we make this very simple. And uh, uh, I'm going to ask you to, I know all your names, but I'm going to ask you to say your names. I want these people to know your name because you're a part of this family here on this church. All right. Well, this is Larry. Yes. Larry, Larry, Larry Guy. Guy. All right. And you believe that the Lord has blessed you and that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I do. Have ever since I was 10 years old. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. And Kathy, right, Kathy, and you believe that the Lord Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. I do. Amen. All right. And all those in favor of uh, Lori and Kathy, or Larry and Kathy Geyer joining our church, all those in favor? Amen. And uh, any opposed? All right. All right. All right. You ready to talk yet? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. And I, uh, Krissa and Brock Welshens, you've been a part of this church. You are already a part of this family, but we're thankful that you want to make that commitment and do that for the Lord and Savior. But you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? Yes. Amen. And Brock, you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. All right. Amen. All right. Those in favor of accepting uh, Brock and Krissa? Welshians into our family. All, 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 all in favor? <laughs> Amen. Any opposed? All right, here we go. All right, Max. All right, Max, you believe the Lord Jesus Christ has died on the cross for your sins and that you've accepted him and you have faith in what's to come. Yes, I do. 
Amen. All right. And so Max is going to join us. And all those in favor of Max? Uh, any opposed? All right. Now, we do not have any kind of um, uh, manual to give to you. Uh, we believe in one manual. And uh, that is our uh, Bible. That is our manual. Whoops. Uh -oh. And uh, I'll give you that in just a moment. But I'll give you each one of those. But uh, that's just the Cowboy Bible. It is our manual. That's what we go by, and that's what we believe in. So, all right. Well, let's uh, give you a chance to come up here and welcome those. I want to ask you all to kind of step this way just a little bit. And uh, if you have a chance, just come by here as you're on your way to a beautiful brisket dinner. And, uh, and we'll look forward to, uh, to having great fellowship and helping Jonna and Stephen out for that. All right. Uh, before you leave, just get some information if we don't already have it. And Ursie um, um, will get that from us. And then I have a couple of other things for you. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, who do I want to ask here? Booger, you look strong and ready to go. Would you close us in a word of prayer and bless the meal?